uh, let's add a uh, let's add an armature. <laughs> um, so the idea behind the metarig system is that you create what is called a metarig, and the metarig is not the rig that you will actually be using, but rather it's like a very sparse skeletal version of the rig you're going to end up with that just has information uh, on how to create that rig. Uh, so I'm going to start by creating an arm, and uh, hopefully you'll kind of get the idea from that. Um, so uh, the arm actually requires that it has a parent. Uh, that's probably a restriction that I will remove down the line, but uh, for now that's a current restriction. Uh, and it just requires three bones. So this is the upper arm, the forearm, and the hand. Uh, let's parent this over to this guy. And uh, if we try and generate the rig right now, it's not going to do anything. It will literally end up with a blank rig with nothing but, but a root bone. And that's because we haven't, we haven't put any uh, information into the meta rig as to how it should actually construct the rig from the meta rig. So to do that, uh, we are going to select uh, the upper arm bone and go to the armature panel. And at the very bottom, there's this thing called the MetaRig Templates panel. And this is a list of uh, all of the rig types that you can have, uh, all of the types that you can assign to bits and pieces inside your MetaRig. And in this case, we want a biped arm, so we're going to select arm biped, we're going to say assign. And uh, you'll notice that now it, it highlights, it has the little brackets around it. Uh, and uh, Okay, so now we can actually generate the rig. Uh, so just to be safe, I'm going to go out of pose mode, and uh, we're going to click generate. And now we've got this other thing back here, which is the actual arm rig. Uh, once you've generated the rig for the first time, uh, you can actually move your meta rig off to the side. Uh, it doesn't have to stay in the same position. You'll still be able to regenerate it, uh, like so. And we'll just use the, the same armature that was generated to create that. Um, one thing you'll notice is that uh, this bone doesn't exist anymore over here. Uh, and the reason for that is because we never gave we never gave MetaRig any data telling it what it should do with this bone. Uh, so instead, we just end up with this uh, root bone, and every rig that's generated will end up with a root bone. Uh, and you can see that this bone is called root. Um, okay, so we've created this arm rig, uh, and it looks a little bit funky. Uh, we have both the IK and the FK versions right on top of each other, and it doesn't really, I mean, it's very confusing looking. It doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, like, if you move around the uh, IK controls, like nothing is happening, for example. Um, there don't appear to be any bones associated with it. Uh, anyway, it's, it's just this apparently very confusing mess. Uh, but what's actually going on is that uh, these are only control bones. So all of the bones that have been generated and that are by default displayed uh, in the layers of the rig uh, are all going to be control bones, not the deformation bones. And of course, you don't need an actual upper arm and forearm control for an IK arm. You only need bones that deform from it. So we've just got the, the two controls you have for, for an IK arm. You have the, the hand and you have the uh, the pole target. Um, so to actually see the deforming bones, all of the bones that will actually deform your mesh are going to end up on the third to last layer over here. So these are the actual deforming bones. And uh, one thing you'll notice is that the arm rig, for some reason, uh, has four bones representing the arm instead of just two. Uh, it still only has one representing the hand, but still, this may seem a little bit confusing. Uh, the reason for this is because it helps aid in getting the proper twisting uh, of the arm uh, during deformations. Uh, so, for example, I can bring up uh, the 
Okay, so I'm rotating the hand, and you'll see that the there's like two arts, two parts to the the deform bones for the forearm, and one of them twists with the hand, and one of them does not. Uh, and that is your basis for creating uh, forearm twist, is that you just kind of smoothly weight between these two bones over the the length of the forearm, and then you'll get a nice forearm twist. And the same thing happens with the upper arm. Uh, the upper arm has uh, twists to it as well, uh, depending like based on the pose. And uh, so we can get a feel for that. Uh, you'll notice that uh, as we twist the upper arm here, uh, only this bone is twisting with it, but this one uh, is not. Uh, but it still rotates with it like this. So that gives you a nice basis. Again, you just kind of smoothly weight over the length of the upper arm between these two bones, and then you'll get uh, uh, much better deformations. Anyway, so when you do finally go to do your weight painting uh, with the mesh, you the only bones you have to worry about, literally the only bones you have to worry about at all, are going to be on this third to last layer. Uh, none of the other bones will have any effect on your mesh, and they're not supposed to. So when you do the weight painting, only do the weight painting to the bones on the third layer. Or, th sorry, the third to last layer, <laughs> not the third layer. Um, okay, uh, but one thing that you'll notice that is kind of annoying about this um, is that uh, the, the FK and the IK controls are both on the same layer, uh, and this is obviously not ideal, because it will make it quite confusing. Uh, when you're trying to actually use the rig. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set up, uh, I mean one thing that you could do is you could just generate the mesh, or you, you could just, not the mesh, you could generate the rig just this way and then manually uh, move the uh, bones to the various appropriate layers and that is totally a fine way to go about it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it will work fine. Um, but another way that you can do it, if you want, uh, is to actually set up some extra properties uh, or give some extra information to the, the MetaRig uh, generator um, by adding some more properties to the bone. So uh, under the hood, when you tell it to uh, assign a rig type to a bone, um, what it's actually doing is, if you go to the, the bone panel, or the bone panels, uh, it's actually adding a custom property called type and just giving it the name, and that's that's it. Like if you wanted to, you could actually do this manually. If you memorize the the names of the uh, rig types, you could just uh, do this manually just by adding custom property, calling it type, and saying uh, arm biped, like so, and that works fine. Um, but that also means we can add some other properties. Uh, that are kind of secondary to the main rig type that are still additional information to MetaRig that will modify its behavior and how it generates the rig. Uh, so in this case, what we're going to add is we're going to add a property that will tell it uh, what layer to put the IK controls on. Uh, so to do this, we just uh, call this IK layer, and then we can just give it a number. Uh, in this case, let's say we want to put it on the second layer. Uh, the layers are actually numbered 0 through 31, as opposed to 1 through 32. So the first layer is 0, second layer is 1. It's confusing, but anyway. Um, so we're going to put it on the second layer, and therefore we're going to enter the number 1. Uh, and that should do the trick. Let's see what happens if we generate the rig now. Generate. Okay. So both the IK and the FK uh, controls are still showing up, but you'll notice that there are two, the two layers visible on the armature. And if we go to the first layer, there is our FK controls. And we go to the second layer, there's our IK controls. Something else that's a little bit confusing looking about this is, uh, as I move this, you'll notice there's like this weird stretchy bone. Um, that actually doesn't do anything. Uh, what it's there for is, uh, to connect the, uh, it is just as a visual indication of what arm this control is part of. So say you have a character with two arms, right? Um, if this is just floating way out in space, 
uh, and this weren't there, it would not be at all obvious what arm it goes to. And right now it's not obvious anyway because the arm doesn't exist, but if we reveal this, you can kind of start to see how that works. So the deform bones kind of represent like where the mesh would be in a way. Uh, so you can kind of see how that would start to work, even though uh, it's floating way out there in space. Uh, even if we put it over on the other side where like the other arm control would be, uh, it becomes very obvious which arm the IK control goes to. So they're just visualizations. In fact, I believe, yeah, you can't even select them. I turn selectability off on them. Uh, basically, they're just there uh, as a visualization to connect uh, the IK controls uh, to the arm that they go with so that you don't kind of get lost as you're animating. Uh, Okay, so uh, that's kind of the the basic idea idea behind it. Um, but what's cool about this is you can start combining uh, different rig types and putting them together. Uh, so, for example, uh, if we go back to our meta rig over here, um, this bone didn't show up. But let's say we want it to, like we want this to be control. Uh, well, let's make it a control. So we're going to go into pose mode, select it, uh, and go down to the metric templates. And we're going to make it a copy bone. And, and uh, that sounds a little bit weird. All that means is that it's just going to make sure, it's just going to directly have this bone exist in the rig, just as is. Like, it's not going to do anything special to it at all. It's just going to have it exist there. And uh, so we're going to copy, or we're going to make it a copy bone assign, and then we're going to generate, ta-da, there it is. Okay, well, now we have our bone that these guys are a parent of. If we go to the deform bone layers, you'll see that it exists there too. Um, so that's a uh, kind of simple way. Uh, you'll notice that it is on the first layer as well. Um, so aside from having like a single rig type split off into two layers, as we did before by telling the IK layer to go or the IK controls to go to a specific layer, there's also a very simple way to just kind of organize bones on layers uh, aside from that. So if we go to the meta rig, um, what we can do is Let's say we got, want this guy to be on the third layer. All we have to do is just move him to the third layer in the meta rig, and then he will appear in the third layer uh, in the generated rig. Let me generate and show you that. So here we go. And there he is. He's on the third layer. So in general, meta rig tries to uh, place bones uh, on the same layer as the bones they were generated from in the meta rig. So that's a very simple way to organize layers. But there's some cases, like the arm, for example, where it just creates two sets of controls from the same bones. And in that case, you can use custom properties uh, to specify which bones should go on which layers. So another thing uh, to keep in mind is that the uh, positioning and the uh, alignment of the bones in the meta rig, of course, affect uh, how the rig generates, uh, or how, how the generated rig uh, ends out, ends up. So, uh, for example, uh, in this, uh, the FK arm uh, rotates on this axis here, uh, like it's not, uh, it doesn't rotate around this way, it just rotates around this way. Uh, and that's intentional, I mean, the a normal bipedal arm, bipedal arm will only uh, <laughs> rotate on one axis. The, the forearm will only the the elbow joint is a hinge. It won't rotate on more than one axis. So uh, to make sure that uh, the generated rig is aligned properly, uh, you need to align that in the uh, meta rig. So uh, what we can do is we can go into the armature. Uh, Ah, oh, there it is. Uh, you turn on axes, so then you can actually see the axes of each bone, and uh, it'll s highlight the axes for each bone as you select it. Uh, so, for example, uh, in this case, we can see this is the x-axis, right? So, uh, and 
this and then this is the x-axis on this one um, and with the with the arm rig and in general with most of the rigs I've tried to create them in such a way that the sort of uh, primary axis of rotation if it has one uh, is going to be the x-axis so in this case we want to line up the x-axis uh, to be the uh, kind of direction of rotation for for the, the forearm. So, and it's going to rotate around the x-axis, so you can imagine like if you look directly down the x-axis, it's going to rotate around this way. Uh, so we want to set it up so that it uh, will rotate kind of more the way probably a typical rig will be set up, or uh, sorry, a, a typical model will be set up. Uh, and Okay, and that kind of ends up aligning it with that pretty well. Um, let's just uh, set up the hand to be sort of similar. Um, okay, so now if we uh, generate the rig from that again, uh, then now you'll notice that uh, first of all the pull target is uh, kind of more the way you would expect it to be uh, by default. Um, it's back here instead of down here. Uh, and the forearm now rotates in the direction that you would expect it to. Okay, uh, another thing is that clearly uh, just having these bones, uh, or this, this appearance of the bones, isn't really that helpful. Um, it's all a jumbled mesh, uh, mess, the, um, the kind of bones connecting uh, the pull target and the IK hand uh, to their arms are just bones that look exactly like everything else. It's not at all obvious what is what. It's, it's just downright confusing. Um, so really we want to uh, make those look better. <laughs> um, so there, there, there's again a couple of ways you can go about doing this. Uh, one is you can generate the entire rig and make sure you have the whole rig exactly how you want it. Uh, first, and then you can start creating, like, let's say that, uh, okay, let's create a circle, uh, I'm just going to call this, uh, I like to, for the meshes that are going to uh, be the shapes of control bones, uh, I like to prefix them with WGT for, like, widgets, or, you know, whatever, you could also do, like, GZM for gizmo, I, it doesn't really matter. Um, anyway, uh, we'll call this, uh, I'm just going to call it widget arm for the time being. Uh, and then we can go in here and uh, go to the bone panel, select the, you have to be in pose, pose mode, I believe, and uh, select the bone, go to the bone panel. Uh, and here's this uh, under display is this uh, custom shape uh, field. And all you have to do is just enter the name of the object or the mesh that uh, you want it to uh, mimic the appearance of. Uh, so in this case, uh, widget arm. And clearly that's not exactly what we would want it to look like. Uh, so now we can uh, kind of rotate this around and get it to look more as we would want. I'm just going to... Point five, so it'll be like in the middle of the bone. We can kind of scale it down a little bit, and uh, now we can use this for this one as well. Okay, so now we have sort of this. Uh, you know, it would be a good idea to get a mesh in here. I'm going to put one in. Okay, so I've uh, paused the video and just added a, a mesh quickly. Uh, so here's what the mesh looks like. Um, one thing that I like to do with my armatures in general is uh, you'll notice that uh, these circle controls don't show up in solid mode. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Okay, so under object, I'm going to uh, have its display be wire. And now it will be visible. So now you can kind of see how those, those widgets work, like they're around the arm. Uh, currently they don't deform the arm, but they're around the arm. Uh, and we can probably do something uh, if we duplicate this guy. Uh, say body. Uh, now we can put it like with that guy. Let's get uh, Down 
there or something. Anyway, so we're starting to get some controls out of this. Uh, or some control shapes, rather. Uh, and just for kicks and giggles. Uh, I want to do it on that guy, too. Okay. And for the pull target, I often like to do something along the lines of a... Uh, Also, we have we still have like these big suckers here, uh, and uh, see currently they're unselectable because they are by default. Um, let me try and figure out what they're named again. <laughs> it's always a bad sign you can't remember uh, what you yourself named things. Okay, so here we go. They're going to be Fizz, Bone, 0103, or 02103. Uh, okay. We can get this guy out there. So, what I want to do with these, I just want to make a line uh, for them. So, so there'll just be simple lines. So, I can plane. Widget fizz. Another guy as well. Let's figure out. Uh, okay, so that's what we want. Okay, so then now we've got these uh, handy little lines that just kind of uh, let us know where those controls go to. Okay, so that's uh, one way you can do it. Uh, the other way you can do it is... Oh, okay, so actually let me do something quick. I will demonstrate... Uh, why you would need to make sure you, you've finished your rig, like you don't want to regenerate it at all uh, before you do this, uh, because if we regenerate this now... Ah! All the shapes go away. Oh no! No! All that work! Oh! So, uh, what we want to do is... Uh, or So, the other way you can do it, if you want it to generate with the shapes, uh, is actually relatively straightforward. Um, first, uh, actually, I'm just going to name these guys because I never did. <laughs> uh, so you'll notice this is Bone 001, Bone 002, Bone 003. Um, and we go over to these guys. These are named Bone 002, Bone 003, Bone 004. Is that right? Wow, that's weird. Okay, it. Uh, put them up one level. Uh, in any case, uh, we're going to rename this, so it's going to be upper arm, uh, forearm, hand, and uh, where we put that uh, other guy? He's like over here. He's going to be a torso? Sure, why not? Um, Okay, so now we've named those guys sanely. Now if we generate the rig again, we should get uh, some better names on these guys. Yeah, so upper arm, forearm, hand IK, and uh, also hand... Oh, and actually, uh, 
you'll notice that the hand actually did pick up the shape, and I will explain why, uh, because this is exactly how you want to do it. Uh, whatever the bone's name is, if you just prefix it with WGT and names, name an object in the scene that, it's going to use that object to as the shape for the bone. So in this case, I had already a WGT hand, uh, and it has to be all caps and with a hyphen before it, uh, and yeah, and the, and the caps has to be all right and it's case sensitive. Um, and uh, because I did that, when it generated it, it searched for this for an object of this name and used it for that bone. I hope that makes sense. The bone is called hand. The object is called WGT hand, and so when it generates it, it will search for this and use that as the shape for the hand. We can do that for the rest of them now. Uh, so in fact, we can uh, take this guy, and let's see. So this guy is called hand IK. So let's duplicate this and call it hand IK. And you can also use instancing if you want. Uh, Alt D instead of Shift D. Uh, if, if it has, if it's going to have the same shape, that'll work too. Uh, okay, this guy is called upper arm. So we're going to call this guy upper arm. And then let's uh, duplicate it, duplicate it, and do uh, forearm. Let's just kind of collect these guys up here. So. Those are the hands, this is the arm. Uh, it's going to be called. Ah, not Tosro. I can't type. Torso. Though Tosro would also be a pretty cool control name. Okay. And then. Okay, for the line, uh, it's going to be. What are these guys called now? Viz Hand IK and Viz Forearm IK. So that, you know makes a bit more sense now. Um, so we're going to duplicate this guy. And one of them is going to be uh, viz hand ik exactly as it is named in the thing over here, and the other one is going to be viz forearm ik. Elbow targets. I think that's it. Elbow targets. Okay. I'm going to save this quick. Uh, and now, uh, if we generate. Haha! -ha, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's just beautiful. Okay. Now everything is all set up. Uh, something I personally abhor is the relationship lines, uh, at least in pose mode. So I'm going to turn that off. And now we have this kind of uh, much more nice looking uh, thing going here. Uh, we still haven't weighted the mesh to the armature yet, so let's uh, go ahead and just use uh, automatic weights for now, uh, just to kind of get a rough idea. It's not going to be great, but it'll Hopefully, do the trick. Uh, so, uh, so it's Control Alt P for parenting. If you do, if you parent a mesh to an armature, it will give you an option to uh, also create an armature modifier automatically. So we do that, and now if we start posing around. We should see. Yeah, obviously the weights are not great, but uh, you know they uh, get the job done. Okay. Um, <laughs> you'll also see that like the the double bone arm thing that I did. Uh, doesn't work out so great with automatic weights. Uh, you really have to go in there and manually make a very smooth transition. Um, also, it's generally a good idea for the uh, modifier uh, to have a dual quaternion transformation, or deformation zone. Okay. Anyway, so now we got that, so we can kind of start to see uh, how the uh, how the how the rig interacts with the the animator, or how how you would start to actually use this rig. So you can see this guy just kind of brings everything along with it, uh, excepting for the uh, IK control and the pull target. Um, 
Um, and uh, anyway, to do the IKFK switch, that'll be uh, if you select an IK control and go to properties, uh, it's automatically created a IKFK switch property uh, on the IK on the IK controller. So you can start to you can blend between those. Um, so now we can do this as a uh, oh, it doesn't. Uh, 